Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. We bless him for his grace, his kind mercies. <clears throat> and we thank him for everything. We just lift him up. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, may you be glorified. Ask that you remove the flesh, Father, and that you may, may have your way. So thank you if you've been following us. We've been doing a series on the armor of God. And um, this particular day, we're going to continue on that series. I'll encourage you to look at the earlier ones, to look at the, all the different lessons leading up to this. And today we're going to be looking at the armor of the Lord that speaks about the gospel of peace. Amen. So um, if you have, so as we go along, if you have any comments or questions, we can take those at the end. I'm going to be just sharing from Ephesians 6.15, and it is written, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So as we look at this, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at the definition. We're going to just start by looking at that just to give us greater insight as to what this armor is and just revelation from the Lord. So it's written here that Wearing foot gear such as shoes or being equipped with tires, furnished or equipped with a shoe, hearing that does well mean, well shod mean. Wearing or protected by well fitted or high quality shoes. So again, we're just going to take a quick look here as how the feet look work and it says standing and walking on two legs has many advantages our feet need to provide a steady base for the rest of the body to perch upon they serve as shock absorbers as we walk weight smoothing out the impact of landing with a force that exceeds our body run and there's even more force and a need for more cushioning. They act as levers that propel us forward and occasionally, occasionally in other directions. The foot is the lowest most point of the human leg and the foot's shape along with the body's natural, with the body's natural balance Keeping systems make humans capable of not only walking, but also running, climbing, and countless other activities. Amen. So we're going to look, one of the questions we have is how do sandals on our feet operate as armor? And keep in mind, it says having shod on your feet. So equipped on your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So it's, it's, it's saying that the feet have been equipped with, together with the preparation of peace as a shock absorber, it walks upright. You know, there's a lot, and this is what we put on our body. And um, it's just showing that it can carry, it is prepared to be able to bring the gospel of peace, hallelujah. So as much, of, as much as the sandals or the feet sandals are backed by the authority of Christ, they embody Christ. They usher, they make way for peace and humility to reign. The feet also represent humility. If we recall all the armor that we've been looking at, we finished with the breastplate of righteousness. It is wearing Christ wearing, putting on his righteousness. So in this case, it says humility is one of the most significant pieces of armor. It is, an, it is immensely effective. It has great impact. And if we recall, it says that they are sandals of peace. So let's take a look at a lesson from our Lord regarding this amazing armor. And we're going to look at John 13, 
verses 1 to 17. It is written, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So we see that his love was so overflowing. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm going to do, but later you will understand. Oops. And he says, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. So we know that Jesus answered, he says, those who have not had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Now, here's where it becomes interesting. It says, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So <clears throat> he's saying that the Lord washed the feet and he said that, if, you, if I don't do this, you, you don't have any part of me. So the feet, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the feet are being prepared by the cleansing of the Lord. It's very important that this armor represents a cleansing of the Lord. And it's, 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 it's partly his humility is how we interact with each other as we follow as siblings in Christ Jesus. In John 13, 30, 34 and 35, it says, a new command I love you, I give you. <laughs> love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, when we we're reading, it says the hour had come and Jesus continued to love each one. So we know that Jesus did not avoid washing Judas's feet. Neither did he stop loving him, knowing that he was going to betray him. And so we see that he was demonstrating utmost love and humility towards his, this, his enemy's agent, namely Judas. If you recall, we, we saw that the armor is not, the war is not against flesh and blood but it's against principalities and powers. So here, he didn't hate Judas, but he was against the agent of that was behind Judas. It says, uh, so the armor of peace and humility that Judas, that Jesus was demonstrating was full of the spirit. So he was able to love Judas. He, he, he was in complete control of his emotions. The spirit of God upon him gave him the ability to just focus on the, the matter. So he was 
completely focused. He still loved Judas and he continued to wash his feet. So it takes great humility to remain steadfast. So this armor is a very powerful piece. In Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So when we wear the armor of peace, we will not respond out of our flesh. We will be able to overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21, it says, do not overcome, be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Amen? So this preparation of the gospel of peace is very powerful because we are going and we'll, we'll continue reading and we'll see how this armor is an armor that is a, has a very powerful um, role. It says, when we strive to fill ourselves with the peace of Christ, we then yield to the spirit as vessels of mercy. And this enables his peace to, to flow through us so all may experience his peace regardless of the circumstance that they're in or regardless of the captivity they're in. So by wearing this armor, the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding is able to prevail. And that is in Philippians 4, 7. So we who have this armor, are, are, when we are armored with peace and armored with, with, with humility, we are able to bring these attributes of Christ into whatever circumstance. Now, if you recall, Christ told us that his peace is not like that of the world. The world is selfish. We know that. And the way the world is, it is vengeful, vengeful. It is cruel. It only cares about itself. Everyone is seeking from themselves, protecting their own. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. We saw that Yeshua up above, in, in the chapter we just read, washed his disciples' feet. He wanted to show them that how important it was for them to care about each other. And to, to the, the cleansing of the feet was to show that it was very important to him, which is why I put in there that we must love one another. It is part of the armor. It protects us as we go out. The love of Christ, the peace of Christ, the humility protects us because we are going to meet vengeful people who are, in, who are either in a vengeful state, they're full of anger, they might be full of bitterness, they, 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 they're, they're, maybe they have a lot of rejection going on. They're, we're going into situations that are... Um, uh, what's the word I want to use, molded by circumstances in the world. And so we must have this armor upon us in order to go forth. So let's keep reading. In John 14, 27, it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, he, when he was washing the feet, he was hurting, but he was also full of love and full of peace. He, he, he wasn't, he didn't, you know, attack Judas. He didn't cause a big commotion. We can go with a humble heart into any situation, with a peace into any, any circumstances. 
It says it should be evident when people are in our presence, they should be able to experience or feel the peace. We should decrease so that Christ can shine through. So this armor comes from spending time with Christ in the word so that we are, we are applying all his, um, applying everything. But th th this is more about what the armor does for us. So I'll, I'll, it says, so rather than respond in our flesh when enticed by the enemy, humility kicks in and disarms the enemy. It empowers us to operate in peace and not offense or with vengeance. In Romans 12, 20, it is written, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Our scriptures tell us that if you, then that's the New King James Version. The message is written like this. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he is thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Do not let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. Again, we have Proverbs 21, 20 saying the same thing. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. If you, if you keep heaping burning coals on his head, the Lord will reward you. So there's a reward when we practice human humility, when we practice um, peace. We actually, it is, it disarms the enemy, which is very powerful. Very powerful because the world is not expecting peace. It is not expecting humility. In fact, the opposite of humility is prior, proud. You know, how do we, how we approach and engage with the lost, how, how we approach and engage with the lost is how we wear the armor. Is, is the function of the armor. It says with and in humility and not with arrogance, not in pride, not in self-righteousness. When, when we have on the preparation of the gospel of peace, we, have, we allow open access to people, to people's hearts. We get a response that, it, that Christ Christ's humility and peace commands. Romans 12, 1 to 21, if we read the whole um, passage, it's about being a living sacrifice to all so that none is lost. Our shoes transport us to be so everywhere. When we are sent, we should be clothed in humility in Christ. Wherever we go, it should be our persona. It should be covering us, humility and peace. So the sandals of peace precede us and make it possible for us to gain territory. And here in parentheses, I put territory is, is hearts and souls because really it's all about winning souls for Christ. Um, and with that, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual, but it also has material component. The, the sandals of peace <clears throat> establish the kingdom of God. They help us to gain territory. They gain nations, souls, and the wealth of the nations or the land fall under the authority of the kingdom when we, are, we have this armor. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun. So 
metaphorically, like wherever we go, we should be able to, to, to take over the situation by our presence. Because remember, we are, we are clothed in Christ, in his humility, with his peace. We're able to calm the storm. When it says from the wilderness, we're able to calm a situation, calm a storm, turn it around. Deuteronomy 11, 24 says, every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the Western Sea shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread. Just as he has said this to you. So the message says every square inch on which you place, you place your foot will be yours. Your borders will stretch from the wilderness to the mountains of Lebanon, from the Euphrates River to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand in your way. Everywhere you go, God sent fear and trembling will precede you just as he promised. So I, I really um, encourage you to always uh, to to to. To, to look at different um, of this the, the, the Bibles of this of the verses sometimes they they, they shed a more light and in, uh, into the scriptures as we read them. So this is very interesting where it says God sent fear and trembling precede you. So when we are filled with the peace of Christ, the armor, when we are, when we are shod, when we are covered with the preparation of this, the, 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 the sandals of peace, we can expect this kind of results. It says in Matthew 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. In Matthew 10, 7, it says, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come as you go. So it is about a movement as we're going, healing the sick, raising the dead, driving out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So the sandals of peace release, um, we're going to look at this, they release a judgment. If the order and peace of the kingdom, Christ within us is rejected, the consequences fall on the nation or the soul. So in Matthew 10, 11 to 14, it is written like this, whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. This is powerful. In Psalms 1, 4, it says, the, God, the, God, the ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind blows away. I just want to add here that we've all, we also been learning about chaff from the threshing floor. Um, these are lessons that we, 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 we um, receive. Um, so this is from... a. a taken this from something that we had received from Reverend Paulette. It is written in the Micah 412. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan that he has gathered them like sheaves on the threshing floor. On the threshing floor, the wheat is thwacked to remove the chaff from the grain. It is beaten. 
in order to, it's dry, you know, it's dry, it's beaten there. And when the kingdom of God comes through the gospel of peace, to the shod through the gospel, the sandals of the gospel of peace, the process of transforming us into his like likeness takes effect immediately. When we encounter the kingdom of God, there's an immediate response. If it's if either we 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 reject him altogether, or we are uh, and we're we'll be blown away from the kingdom. So in John 12, 48, it says, He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him on the last day. So if we see in Matthew, the disciples were instructed to, to retain their peace, to leave their peace, let it rest upon the household where they were going. <clears throat> if that house, if they were received, if they were welcomed. So there's a consequence if the home is deserving, that peace will rest. That peace that Jesus gave, he said, my peace I leave with you, I do not give as the world gives. It's very powerful that he's saying here that they will shake the dust off the feet. So nothing at all from that town should, should receive even a little bit of the peace because they rejected it. They rejected Christ. And it's interesting in verse 15, it says, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. So rejecting the peace, rejecting the armor, this particular armor of God is very powerful. There's a consequence. In verses 12, John chapter 12, verse 48, it says, he who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him of the last day. Amen. continue here and then we're looking at the, the the sandals of peace as a as an armor as a piece of armor in second chronicles chapter 36 verse 16 it says that but they continually mocked the messengers of god despised his words and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people until there was no remedy. So once someone has encountered the peace of Christ, the humility and um, rejected it, this is just another scripture that shows that the wrath of God is what is left. Judgment of God on, on the people. It, Zechariah 7, 12 also supports this. It says, they made their hearts like flint so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Therefore, great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Amen. So one of the things I, I want us to understand is that the armor is, is for us. We are the one wearing the armor because we're going into uh, war. It's a territory. So we're going into, we're, we're approaching, we're in situations where there is a lot of uh, um, the word I want to use, casualties. So this armor, I'm going to, oops, let me go back there, sorry. So the armor of the feet shod with the gospel of peace, prepared with the preparation for the gospel of peace, offers so many things. They offer us the authority of Christ as ambassadors of his kingdom. This is what the armor does for us. It provides us with protection, offers us protection. Um, Peace and humility, we had looked up earlier in, in, in Joshua when it says that 
that God will send fear and trembling before him, before us, the servant of God. It, it offers protection. It, it no, it, you know, his weapons are not like ours. So, and well, this is a, 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 a an armor, a piece of an, an armor that um, helps us when we are maybe are rejected. We need to be able to respond through the Holy Spirit and not on our flesh. So it is an immense, a very, very powerful form of protection over our hearts, over just over us so that we are able to continue to be in the battlefield, continue as we're wearing the armor to uh, be impacted or be, a, you know, to receive whatever the situation is, we are able to remain protected. This armor, as we saw, it disarms the enemy. When you pour hot coals on the enemy, they, they don't know how to respond to peace, how to respond to humility. It totally disarms them because they expect us to be offended, to respond with our flesh and be offended and, and retaliate in some form that is not of God. It subdues rebellion and resistance. When peace can uh, be provided where there was all kind of trauma to a, a soul, a heart, we can offer peace just by being our presence, you know, maybe the, the what we say or how we, we are, our 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 um providing a solution it helps to subdue we are able to subdue the the rebellion that was there and the resistance we saw that where he ever he stepped he took the entire territory and god sends fear and troubling of his name in us to the hearts of his enemy so this armor is very powerful The armor gains and wins souls. That's another, another powerful um, benefit of this armor. It gives us access to wealth. This is the wealth, uh, material wealth, but just wealth of, of gaining souls, wealth of having and just growing it, you know, with the spirit that when we allow the spirit to help us to build, you know, circumstances and situations will always be there to um, trigger, that's the word I wanted to use, trigger an offense in us, trigger something that will help us in our emotions that will, is designed to make us retaliate or respond in a way that is of our flesh so we are when we when we put on and wear humility daily peace we are able we are we are fortifying ourselves we are gaining the armor is is very powerful we we are we we have every provision and we lack nothing establishes the armor establishes the kingdom of heaven which is built on peace and righteousness it establishes peace beyond any and all intellectual comprehension because we are able to silence a still a storm do whatever it is whether if, it, if we cast out a demon if we you know, if we if we heal someone's heart from being broken, we are we are bringing we are filling peace. We are removing that resistance, that rebellion, and providing peace that is beyond the 
harassment of that this soul has been experiencing. blesses us with the blessing of the Lord. When we saw earlier that the Lord was with them, the Lord provided peace, the Lord was there, the blessing of the Lord, his presence. The Lord himself is our peace. The Lord himself, as we know, is, is, was of utmost humble, humble nature. So it blesses us with the blessing of the Lord. He is blessed. He is pleased when we put on, when we are prepared with the gospel of peace on our feet. He lifts us up. In James 4, this armor lifts us up. We, this is one of the benefits. In James 4.10, it says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. So when we are prepared with this armor, the Lord lifts us up. He, we gain favor. He, he, we, we are, um, he's, he's, he's pleased. Let me put it that way. Um, we gain intimacy and friendship with God when we have this armor. It's one of the benefits because, as I, I mentioned earlier, humility and peace, the peace, was, was key for Christ when he went around. He was full of peace. He was full of humility. And this is a closeness. This brings a closeness. You remember that uh, Moses was a friend of God. He was so humble. It, it brings, it, it, this is a big part of God and of Christ's nature. So it gives, Bring, provides intimacy and friendship with God when we have this armor. It also provides us with grace, more grace. In James 4, 4 to 6, it is written, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity of God? Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we, we receive more grace. This, this armor, it just goes with that. When the more we, we, we are fortified in the Lord, in his, we, the more we put on peace and humility, the more grace we are accorded. When we wear Christ in his full humility, every knee bows and every tongue confesses. Oh, there's a typo there, excuse me. Every tongue confesses Jesus as Lord. So this is a huge victory. You know, Christ in, in his humility, we're going to look at the results of what happened. And we kind of know this, but it's, it's great to look at it again. And we'll read it together in Philippians 2, 5, 3, 11. It says, you must have the same attitude that Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue de declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So when we wear Christ in his, the fullness of his humility, this is generally the response, the response that we, we have from people because they are so grateful to receive the love, to receive the patience, to receive the peace, to receive the freedom from whatever captivity that they were in because of the humility that when we when we 
cultivate that when we allow and yield the Holy Spirit and in situations when we exercise humility and our vessels of peace, then people can come to Christ and call him Lord of their lives. Amen. Amen. So there's so much more to say on this um, on this piece of armor. I don't know if anybody, so I, I want to thank you. It's not a very long lesson, but if I don't know if anybody has a comment or um, uh, uh, yeah, a comment or anything, um, the floor is open. Okay. So I think what um I think yeah, thank you so much for the lesson. And I think that is what I needed. I didn't know why I was awake at 3 a.m. So. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to sit my heart and understand I need peace. So I thank God for this lesson. Amen. 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 And you know, the armor of God is so different from the world. So we just give him glory. And um, maybe we'll just say a prayer here. I don't know if there's any other. Thank you for sharing that. And um, thank you for joining. This armor is a, is a very, very powerful armor. And it's one of the big challenge for us because it's very difficult for us to uh, we, we you become a doormat basically allowing people to do whatever but because we're going in these situations when we're full of christ we are able amen we're able to put that wear the armor and that's why it is one of the armors because the lord knows we need it so we'll just say a prayer here and give him glory and um adore him uh, Father, we just bless you. We say thank you because you know what we need. You know that our hearts are fickle. You know that we, we, we need you. We need you for everything. We have been trained by the world in so many ways. And we are so rounded, surrounded daily by people who are injured or um, even um, our own brothers and sisters in Lord. And you have said, you know, put our own interests away in the interest of others because you will lift us up. It is you who rewards us. And we, we, we need you, Holy Spirit. So we say thank you. May you continue to equip us. Um, may we continue to be trained and to wear your armor daily that we can have very... Um, strong hearts lord to to manage everything that you have given us lord we bless you we say thank you yeshua holy spirit have your way Thank you. May the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding continue to guard us in every way, our hearts and our minds. In Yeshua. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. So I'll stop here sharing. I mean, recording. And I say thank you for, for joining. Um, May the Lord be with each one of you and may he increase us in his, in his armor of uh, the, the, his peace and humility. Amen. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Mama Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Good night.